basket over. Oh, and Butler right now is exhausted with 46.7 remaining. How's it hanging, Heat Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Culture Shock, the first ever all-female NBA Miami Heat podcast. I'm your host, Clippy, and I'm joined by my other host, Kaylee. Hey, guys. Uh, it, 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 it's definitely been a while. Um, we have a lot to talk about today, um, so I think we should just get right into it, honestly. Yeah. Um, let's first talk about the Suns game. I feel like that's a pretty good place to start since it's our last game that we just played. Um I just want to get your full opinion on the game, what you thought about how we played, just the whole full summary of, of, of the Suns game. Um, well, first off, um, I want to really give the highlight to Kyle Lowry, really holding it down, being the point guard that we need. And I feel like because he's so effective of being a point guard and doing his job, it's almost like that's the reason why people don't notice, if that makes sense. Like he's getting all these like little sneaky assists, like the most like clutch shots. And then people are like, yeah, but he's just being him. But I'm like, we should give him some praise for that, right? Yeah, a thousand percent. He's definitely creating uh, offense when we don't have anyone else to create offense. You know what I mean? Uh, he definitely s- just makes our offense a hundred times better. That's why every time he's on the floor, we're playing better. We look better. Our offense is just running smoothly. So yeah, definitely credit to him. He definitely did not get enough credit. He was outshined, I feel, by Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero, which had literal picture perfect games. Duncan Robinson had twenty seven points. He was eight for sixteen from three. So finally, I he just completely has turned himself around. I guess the health and safety protocols for him was the best thing that ever happened to him. Or coming off the bench, perhaps. <laughs> Dude, I love him coming off the bench. And I know that it's not going to stay that way, but I love it. Yeah, I think it's like a good, like, um, re-force of energy. Because it's, it's almost like we tire out at the first starters, you know. And then, like, once they come in, they have, like, a whole new kind of starter energy. So then the other people are kind of already tired. And, like, I feel like it works, at least for right now, with our situation. Yeah, I agree. I think Max True starting is just great. I know it's not going to happen. I know Spo is not going to do it. <clears throat> but Max Drew starting is just his chef kiss. Yes, it, basically, in 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 summary, it really is chef's kiss because he is just different. I don't know what happened to him between last season and this season. If he always had it in him, but he could shoot, he could drive, he could pass, he could do everything, and it's just. It, it, it's honestly shocking. I think that Max Struess has definitely been the most shocking player on our team, at, at least for, for me. I mean, like, well, during the, the summer league, I actually watched, like, a lot of the games during that time because I wanted to see, like, Omar and, and Struess kind of see, like, what they can bring on our team since, like, them going through summer league, it's almost like a little practice round against people that are not that good. But even then, like, they were showing off, both of them, but also specifically Struess. He was doing, like, everything under the sun it was insane so i was like if he does like half of this with the full season then i'm super excited and i feel like last night that just came out full force and it was such like a fucking oh oh, it was such a spectacle to see yeah i agree um max Struess is just great he once he catches fire i i'm honestly scared I, I, for the other team, I actually heard a story going more in depth about Max Struess uh, the other day that uh, the ref had called him his name wrong and the bench was like laughing, the bench of the other team, I think it was against the Blazers, the bench was laughing, you know, making fun of him and then he hits a three and basically in the bench's face and then he looks at the ref and that to me is just great. It's like he wants you to know his name because he's up and coming, you know what I mean? And he's been great for us. I... I love him. I wish that the Heat store sold his jersey so I could buy it. But sadly, they don't, which is a very weird. But anyways, moving on. I I do want to talk about Duncan Robinson, though, since we just sprinkled into him just a little bit. Uh, 27 points, 8 for 16 from 3. I He caught fire, and he did not stop the whole night. I know. It's like I was like kind of waiting for like for the hot streak to stop, but then it just never did. <laughs> I was waiting for that too. I was like, okay, so when is he gonna start missing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then he didn't. I was actually very impressed. Um, if let's be honest, if he plays this way every single game, we win. We win every game. 
you yeah. know, we we are a good three point shooting team, to say the least. You know, sometimes, of course, we struggle, but we're we have a lot of shooters. We really do. We have shooters. So when everyone gets going, especially that trio of Max, Tyler and Duncan, the Tres Leches, once the they get leches. going, it's over with. It really is. Like yeah. They can shoot lights out and it will be over for the other team. So. Especially like last night, I feel like they really couldn't like find an answer for them. It's like anytime that they felt like they could get a hold on one, they like missed the other, you know? Yep. Yep. So. It's like when they, once they contain one, the other one's like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll start going crazy too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's just impossible to stop. It really is. This, this little uh, big three that we have of these uh, white boys is, I love it. I, I'm here for it a thousand percent. And they're, this trio is just shooting lights out, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. I know. <clears throat> and even like, even people of, um, we should also give a shout out to like Omar with specifically his, his rebounding that that alone is so impactful that um, they're able to like get in these spots again quickly and like shoot those balls. But it's like without Omar really just getting all those rebounds and like really clutching and lessening our tone turnovers. It like, it really showed how much that's so valuable, especially last night. Yeah, I, I agree. Omar o- Omar has been great. Um, he has 15 plus rebounds in four consecutive games, he's the first rookie to do so since Shaq. Those are insane numbers. Insane <laughs> numbers. Like, they're not talked about enough. I feel like everyone's, you know, giving credit to Tyler and to Duncan and, you know, Max Strews. But, like, I really hope, and <clears throat> I mean this with all my heart, I really hope once we're full strength and Bam comes back and Demon is back, that somehow we could get Omer minutes. Because yeah. he is just a rebounding machine yes. every ball that is off that rim he is getting it and i like i don't even know how he does it it's like he has 10 in the first half sometimes and i'm just like okay like, yeah, like it's, casual he does it like with the ease somehow literally it's casual and it's like yeah. where, where did we get this guy <laughs> like where did you come from <laughs> man this uh this recruitment team is just it, it crazy the people we find it amazes me all the time but more about Omer, though, um, he had seven assists in that Phoenix game, which is also crazy for a big man. Yes, exactly. Like, that's crazy. He's playing out of his mind. And obviously, the offense can get a little better, of, of course. Yeah. Um, he, he, he usually has slow starts, takes a while to get going. But, he, you know, he had that clutch little jumper against, uh, I forgot who it was that we played. He had that clutch little jumper that looked good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So once he keeps developing through the Heat organization, you know, working with UD and uh, Bam in his ear, Deadman in his ear, you know, all those guys that want to help him, he's going to get even better. And that's just scary to think about. I know. Like, I I keep thinking about, like, once everyone is, like, back and healthy, he's going to be such, like, a good, like, reliever between, you know, benching people, you know? So I feel like he's, like, he can be, he he can become reliable. And I feel like that's so valuable as a player that it's like if they know that they can put you in and you're gonna do an exceptional job and it's not just like minute time you know yep a thousand percent our our bench it has this depth that i can't even fathom how good it is because anyone that comes off the bench can produce and it's like we didn't it, it, it's such a change from last season when you know our bench would come in and you're like oh here we go you know <laughs> oh boy. I mean? like oh boy it starts now <laughs> but now it's like these guys are going to come off the bench and, and produce and, and give us a... Usually when the bench comes in the game is when we start getting the lead. Yeah, you know? exactly. And that's just that's just huge. I mean, I'm this bench is great. I I hope everyone stays healthy and everyone comes back. And I, I am so beyond excited to see this team full strength because we are scary. We're scary, scary. now, to yeah. be honest. We're kind of scary now. But... Full strength with everyone, Jimmy, Bam, Marquise Moore's back. Everyone, oh my goodness, we're unbeatable, <laughs> really. Let's be honest, like we yeah. really are. But speaking, moving uh, forward, oh, yeah, no, like actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, like, speaking of people like coming back, we should also talk about the 10 day extensions for oh, yes, Guy and Silva. Yes, I, I mean, Guy, yes, I wasn't, I'm, I'm not that much of a Silva fan, but he, you know, has come and done what he's needed to do. You know, I mean, he goes out there, gets some rebounds, sets some moving screens, <laughs> but there, he's, he's attending, <laughs> but he's been good nonetheless. You know what I mean? He sacrifices his body, he throws himself, he's a heat culture type of guy. 
not uh, not necessarily a guy that we're going to keep throughout the whole season, but just for, you know, the 10 days and the extra 10 days we're going to have him. Um, he's been he's been pretty good. But Kyle Guy, oh, my goodness. He has surprised, I feel, everyone in the league, not just you and me, because I know he's surprised you too. He yeah. is literally, he came out of nowhere. You know, he was playing in the G League. And he comes out and just scores the ball. Like, he's yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to just wave everyone off. I'm going to ISO, go one-on-one, score the ball. It's, it's, it's nuts. You know, he waved off Jimmy Butler, and he was like, I got this. So I, I, I like his confidence. I, I really do. And now with another white boy, I don't know, it might be a cuatro leches pretty soon. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, getting, it's getting wild with all these white boys. Yeah. And, like, also the fact that we got, like, Silva back, even though we, we, we adore his, you know, contra- c- contribution and all, but it was shocking how we didn't get one specific guy back. <laughs> Do we want to say? Say it. You know. Say you it. Know. <laughs> now you say, say it. Say it. I want to hear you say it. <laughs> we didn't get to see, you know, the nostalgia on the court, let's just say. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's very odd how we sign, you know, everyone, Twitter literally breaks, because yeah. it literally did break, it broke the internet, he Twitter, um, when we re-signed, or signed, not re-signed, <laughs> well, kind of re-signed, technically. Technically, yeah. <clears throat> when we uh, signed Mario Chalmers to attend day, and then he didn't even put his shoes on. Yeah. So, that's a little tough. Um, maybe, I'm, I'm honestly thinking it could have been like a uh, mentorship type of role, where he just comes in and tells the players, hey, look, like, I see you guys are doing this when you should do this instead. You know, he has that championship mentality, that championship experience. And it's not really near the playoffs, so I don't really understand why we did it. But I guess, you know, maybe they did it to give he fans a little nostalgia, a little, a little happiness in the dark times. And what's funny, too, is because I know that we, like, talk a lot about how we don't get media attention often. And maybe, like, this was, like, a, a secret little ploy, perhaps, to get some media attention yeah. over at us. Maybe. I, I mean, it could be. I mean, the media hates us. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. They've hated us since we created the Big Three. And that's fine. You know, we're the most hated team in the league, and it will continue to be that way forever. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But... Yeah, I mean, it could have been a, a media ploy just so, you know, people talk about us more. People tune into our games to see if Mario Chalmers is actually going to play. But then he didn't, and it was very odd. I feel like every game I kind of was, like, looking at the bench, like, um, is he going to come in? So, yeah, like, are you going to hop in anytime soon? <laughs> yeah, literally. I was like, please, I, I, I wanted it. I needed it for my soul. And it just <laughs> didn't happen. I, 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 was, I was very disappointed. I'm not going to lie. But, I mean... What are we going to do? I, I, I suppose coaching, I guess, is something we're obviously going to have to respect because he's doing a great job at it anyways. And going into Eric Spolstra, I know it's early, but and I, I'm 100% biased. Coach but he's year. coach of the year. Let's yeah, coach of the year. <laughs> like, let's be honest. I mean, like it's like hands down at this point, to be honest. Yeah, this man is coaching a G League 10-day contract team to be teams that, you know, we didn't think we're gonna be like let's be honest like going into the sun's game exactly going into the sun's game we didn't really have that much hope we weren't you know oh yeah we're gonna beat them tonight we're better than them no yeah there was not one he fan that thought that let's be honest yeah because i was like i i I need to mentally prepare myself for us getting blown out tonight (laughs) (laughs) but then you know spo comes in takes care of business players take care of business I think that in that in that Suns game, we were playing a 2-3 zone at one point, and it was just great. We just played just outstanding, and we have to remember to give credit to Spo. He doesn't... Oh, yeah. I, I feel like he does get enough credit, 100%, but we have to give him credit right now. What he's doing with all these players out is just fantastic. Oh, yeah, because it, it's, it's extremely hard to coach... Like, to also, like, coach the same way that you would coach um, a full, healthy team against another full healthy team you know with like it's almost kind of being dealt a really strange set of cards and he somehow it's like you know what I'm still gonna win with this and it's like okay you know so it's like the fact that he's able to like do that and be able to come up with plays that actually work effectively it's just it's amazing it really shows how much how smart he is and like how talented he really is as a coach yeah I I that was worded literal chef's kiss perfect (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> literally great i've spo is just 
the 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 piece that we've needed forever you know it, it well I mean obviously we've had him forever but I mean as like the piece that is so important so vital in these times where we're you know not healthy and all that stuff but going into the injuries though I, I do want to talk about Markeith and how he hasn't um played in I think 30 something games which oh, is yeah. actually like I have no words to describe 30 games Jokic got a one game suspension and he's out there being a sloppy fat boy, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, quoting from you know. Yeah, quoting uh, Markeith Morris straight, yeah, from the, straight from the press. But I think it's crazy. I don't know when he's going to be back. I feel like he's always hinting that he's going to come back and then he doesn't. I haven't even seen him playing. I, 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 I Like, I is he in the gym? I feel like he just like loves the troll right now. He's like really just like soaking that in as much as he can. But yeah, I just even wonder if he's even training at this point. I hope yeah. so. I, I mean, he better be lifting weights something. I don't know because I, I, when he was playing, he obviously didn't produce so much, but he did help. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he gave us something that we needed, you know, the rebounding, the great defense. You know, he gave us something. But um, with him, I feel like, he whatever he does add it's gonna help us regardless he's a great player i hope him a speedy speedy's talking about please hurry up uh recovery yeah, like you're, from, you're getting late now <laughs> yeah yeah it's getting a little it's getting a little crazy now yeah it's Marquise. been november since november to be honest so it's like yeah. come on guys <laughs> but also like i i actually hope it's not like something serious like because you know the, the the he is very um closeted secretive. with secretive <laughs> with closeted <laughs> is very secretive with yeah. their injuries so it's like we don't really have information like was it a was it whiplash or did you like um break your spine you know yeah, what did, i mean like, like did, did you act, actually, actually break fracture your yeah did, did you actually fracture anything or not really <laughs> exactly and it, that, that's concerning because we don't know you know what i mean he's just been out for so long and we're just in the dark exactly. which sucks but i mean at the end of the day the heat organization always does this with injuries so yeah especially with now if we're being this long as well without bam we're kind of anticipating his return <laughs> the most and, i feel yeah and his return should be not soon but you know soon um <laughs> not soon it, but soon <laughs> yeah I literally i saw him go from the hard cast to the soft cast uh, warming up before games you know dribbling with his with his uh the bad hand and stuff like that so I mean, that's always a good sign, you know, uh, practicing, playing, you know, with the with the hand that's messed up. So, I, I, I mean, I hope to see him before the All-Star break, maybe after. I mean, before would be awesome because he's definitely going to the All-Star game. Yeah. So, that would be great to see him play in it and not give up his spot to somebody else, which would definitely suck. But, we, I mean, we definitely miss Bam. I mean, there's really not much to say there. Bam is, you know, Bam. He's yeah. the core of this team. And yeah, without, without him, him, it's obviously been tough, but that's where, you know, Omer and all these other guys have stepped up, which is great. Yeah. Um, more about the injuries. Jimmy Butler uh, twisted his ankle. Everyone thought it was an Achilles. I uh, started crying. I'm not going to lie. I really did. <laughs> I, was, I, I like, really did when be. I saw it. I was like, it can't be. I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> I was like trying to pinch myself, like, wake up, wake up. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. Like, there's just no way. Yeah. He, he really needs to wear high top shoes. I, don't know how to tell him anymore. I'm about to go to the arena and wear and make a sign that says, please wear high tops because he like, keeps me messing up his ankles. Oh, okay. So like, does that actually like really help? I actually know nothing about like, Oh, a hundred percent. When I was, when I was playing basketball, I was prone to spraining my ankles and wearing high tops definitely helped. You know what I mean? It keeps mm -hmm. your ankle there or at least some ankle braces. Gotcha. Gotcha. But, but no, he just, he's just, <laughs> going at it you know you're like nah, I'm good. cold turkey no <laughs> ankle braces he's just it's just god and him that's it he's got in the court yeah so when i saw him go down i was like oh no he's out for like four games i already knew it um but you know obviously when he comes back he is he's jimmy butler he's gonna do what he's gonna do there's not really go like we don't even have to go much into detail about what he what he gives to this team and how him and Kyle literally just play poetic basketball. It's just beautiful. Yeah. But I hope to see him back soon. Uh, we play Atlanta on Wednesday at Atlanta. I hope to see him. I have hopes that he will be playing that game. But if not, we play Atlanta again after at home. 
So maybe a, a little home return is in our future. Yeah. Actually, that actually that might be that might be better when you think about it, because then he's like, if he's spectating the first like Atlanta game, and then he comes back and actually plays the second one, I feel like it's a good like he got to basically practice in his mind of like, oh, okay, I to like see like a different point of view, and then on the court it might be better. Who knows? Yeah, it's basically like watching film just live. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean that could be good for him. I feel like Atlanta, we should go in there and take care of business. Atlanta's a pretty decent team. You know, Trey Young has been balling lately. He's, I think he's averaging like 30 points per game in his last five games, which is crazy. He's wow. playing great. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, Trey, he's he's uh, he's <laughs> been great forever. Yeah. Uh, he'll probably drop 30 or 40 on our heads, which is fine. I mean, as long as we try and contain him, uh, the Without other guys. Without fouling him. <laughs> He, oh yeah, I know. but you know they added that three-point rule where you can't throw your body into other players and get a foul. But they kind of stopped. They they kind of stopped them um, not calling that, and now they're calling it again, which is kind of odd. But hopefully, you know they don't call it eight hundred times for uh, Trey Young. I know that's but, the one uh, thing that's like the most annoying because I feel like we you can only try so much and be like only so much aggressive before like they just called like really dumb things you know yeah and it's always with like two seconds left on the shot clock yes and so. I'm just like great now he's going to line for three yep exactly <laughs> so but Atlanta uh being our next our next game two twice in a row um we that should be two and all we should beat them twice I mean if, if Tyler and, and Duncan and all these people come in and we play like how we played in Phoenix, we'll, we'll smoke them. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, it should be. It should be easy. I'm, I'm not really worried about Atlanta, even though, you know, you should be, you know, they made that playoff run last season and they went to far. And, you know, they're a good team. John Collins is great, you know, really explosive, uh, explosive player. But we should be fine. Let's yeah. be honest. We really should be okay. Yeah. But knowing the Heat, Knowing the heat, we'll be up by 20 and we'll lose by like eight. Yeah, the fourth. It's always the fourth. That's the scary part. It's when Dude, I want to turn my TV off every <laughs> time. Your palms are all like wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. They just start like freaking out, man. Crying and throwing up. Yeah, it's all like celebration up until like the fucking, I mean, it's all celebration up until the fourth. And then every, all of a sudden, I'm just like, now I feel like I know I need to go get a drink. I, I need to come down. I'm like pacing. So. Yeah, that's, that's literally me. I once the fourth quarter starts, I don't sit because I'm just like, OK, when are we going to ruin this? Yeah. Like when is going to be the time where we where the other team goes on like a 15 and three run and we're just the lead is gone. Like when is it going to happen? Because I know. It, it's so it's so predictable. You know what I mean? Like if the Heat have a they start the game great. It's like, OK, that's good. Cool, cool. But when is it going to stop? And then yeah. when we when we start super bad, it's like okay, we're comfortable because we know that we have a chance to win that game. Yeah, but it's like they they just do the same. It's so predictable at this point. Like in the Phoenix game, I think they brought it between like eight or ten at one point. Yes, they and did. I was like, oh no, here we go. I know. Like literally on the in the Phoenix game, I remember there was about like eight minutes left, and I was like, mm, so eight minutes to like really screw this up somehow. <laughs> like I just I know it. <laughs> yeah, literally. But actually, we you know we answered back. They went on their run, and we went on a bigger one, which is great. And we need to keep doing that. You know what I mean? I don't know yeah. what happens to them where they just completely fold and just suck. Yeah. There's no other. There's no other way to to say it but yeah hopefully you know versus then the next games we have a two in atlanta that doesn't happen we just come in there take care of business and leave with the w's um after atlanta we play toronto which we haven't seen all season uh fred van vliet had his first triple double the other day oh really i didn't yes. catch that yes his wow. first in his career yeah which is um it was pretty i mean pretty cool you know first yeah, good for him. <laughs> yeah good for him you know i don't really have a problem with toronto yeah um they i think are way way low in the in the, in the standings i don't really know where they stand i barely even have heard of toronto basketball besides yeah. their rookie i don't know if their rookie is in if he's out on health and safety protocols no idea but we should go in there and take care of business also you know that's a I, I haven't heard much, but we'll see when we play Toronto if they're, you know, a, a decent team or or what. Yeah. Then we like play 
Exactly. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying like it'd be a good like I guess like middle ground to see like going against like Atlanta and then going against the Raptors. I feel like after those two games, you can kind of have a better gauge of exactly how much strength we are at this point, if that makes sense. Like from a pretty good, decent team with the Hawks and then with like a, eh, I mean, they're okay, kind of like the Raptors, you know? So I feel like that'd just be good overall as like a feeling as a fan of like, okay, I think we're, we're in our better place. Like we can, get, be, we can be more cocky, if that makes sense. If we win like all of those, we'd be like, yeah, we're, we're totally okay then. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're definitely winnable games. You know what I mean? These two yeah. teams, it's like, how you said Atlanta's a good team and then you go from Toronto which is like an eh, iffy team but we tend to lose against those eh, iffy teams uh-huh, exactly. so it's like it's definitely going to be a confidence booster if we can beat Atlanta and beat Toronto because you know it, it's usually the bad you know somewhat good teams that decide to play like all stars one day <laughs> yeah, the Miami Heat in 2013 it's like what the <laughs> heck is going on like I it's, it, yeah. it's very odd <laughs> but um, after that we play um, our, we, we play Philly. Philly. <laughs> we play Philly. Yes. Um, I get so violent when we play Philly because I hate them <laughs> so much that like every little mistake to me is like I I can't I want to turn off the TV because I just hate Philly. <laughs> and then there's a juxtaposition of me, which I, I enjoy. I I love Philly. So um, so wait. Here's a question. When when Philly scores, you clap, and then when the Heat score, you clap also. Yes. <laughs> so wait, so I'm like the supportive soccer mom for both teams. Okay, wait. So do you want the Heat to play good defense or not? That's where I get confused. I feel like if anything, it's a good like a uh, kind of like viewing film in my eyes that it's like the strengths that come out from both teams. I just try to see it from like a overall fan perspective of like oh like say um, I remember last season when they came uh, and played the Sixers at home here I was like wow like Bam blocked that extremely well and like they had like clean shots and I was like Philly is not doing well on guarding three so like I kind of view it more as like an overall kind of like what are the players doing right and what are they doing wrong and it's more like educational than it is like competitive for me it's kind of strange (laughs) I mean yeah that's cool I mean it it, it makes a whole lot of sense yeah I mean it's just I, I do you get happy when the Heat like um have a good defensive possession or they like steal the ball or something? That's where I'm confused because like you like both teams. So it's <laughs> no. like I think just... um it depends on like where they're playing. Like say like if they're playing here, which I am going to the game that's on Saturday here. Um, I can't, I can't I can't. I would be they would kick me out of the arena. <laughs> <laughs> like I would want to see the Heat win in their home arena, you know? Okay, it makes like, sense. Yeah, like I kinda I like seeing them win home so say like if yeah the Heat were playing in Philly I want to see Philly win because I want to see the win at home it's always like the home advantage for me okay so full Heat fan when we play Philly yes let's go man (laughs) that's the best news I've gotten all day (laughs) okay well after Philly we play the Blazers again Uh, we took care of the Blazers you know that was yeah that was pretty okay yeah that was um (laughs) went in took care of business Max Strews did his thing yeah. Um. I do want to talk about Max Struess though. I. I did, did, have we talked about Max Struess today? Not yet. Actually, that's kind of strange because also I have. I changed my name. On yes, Twitter. on Twitter. I saw <laughs> to Max, to Max Struess Stan. Stan. <laughs> yeah. Because like literally like this past few games, I'm like, dude, like I have to. I'm like a full blown Stan at this point. He's yeah. doing amazing. Yeah, he's taking my breath away uh, constantly. Uh, I feel like we did talk about Max Struess to be honest, but I, I. I don't know. My memory is is terrible. But we can talk about him again with him starting um I hope he starts um just him starting is just all around better yeah and I feel like we really did talk about this (laughs) I think we did maybe like I really think we did (laughs) yeah but like overall like the stuck but it's like like finally touch on the starting that it's like when it comes to starting I feel like he kind of somehow benefits more starting then off the bench which is kind of strange it's almost like he's a little bit of more of a firecracker maybe it's almost like similar to i feel like the same situation with tyler that they just become a little bit more energized uh if they start versus off bench or or vice versa and i'm kind of like i don't know it's kind of strange (laughs) yeah i i agree i mean uh max got his first ever career nba start the other day Um, so I feel like he has something to prove every time he's in the starting lineup, which is great. You know, uh, a chip on your shoulder is always great to have when, you know, there's a lot of guys out and you have to step up and play good, which he has been. He's definitely stepped up and, and done what he's need to, what he needs to do. 
But enough about Max Struess. I feel like we haven't talked about a lot about Tyler Hero today and how I am one hundred percent, a thousand percent, full time, twenty four seven Tyler Hero stan. <laughs> um, we really, really need to stop doubting Tyler Hero. Like it's time we stop because he he's good. He's a good player. Like. I think he's earned it at this point that we like that everyone just to stop bullying him. (laughs) Yes. Yes. He has earned it. He definitely has, you know, he's, he comes off the bench, which I love him coming off the bench. I don't know what it is when he, you know, comes off the bench that he just decides to just play outrageously good. Yeah. Like an animal. (laughs) Yeah. It's crazy. You know, he comes off the bench, he produces and he just goes crazy. You know, once he, he ignites it's, it's over with. And I think, Eric Reed on the broadcast calls him the igniter because once he gets started, it, there's no stopping him. Yeah. Like, it's just actually it's hard to outrageous. Find, like, yeah, it's, like, hard to find, like, a solution for him with the other team that sometimes he just, like, it's, like, he doesn't have, like, a certain, like, um, like, position yet that makes sense. Like, you know how, like, it's super predictable to, like, find a PJ in the corner for a three, you know? Like, that's always, like, something that's something that he does all the time versus Tyler like he's just everywhere and he's always ready you know so it's like it's kind of hard to find an answer whenever he's just either running through the lane or open for a three or in the corner you know so it's like it's a lot harder for people to like crack him (laughs) yep and 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 the the way that he could create space off the dribble is just yeah he has improved so much from last season I I have no words. Last season, I hated this man. I wanted him <laughs> off my team immediately. Yeah. And he has just done a complete, like, 180. 180. Yeah. And just is insane. You know, his dribbling is better. He's protecting the ball. He's driving to the basket. Strong moves. He's getting fouled, going to the free throw line. You know, last season, he wasn't really doing that. I mean, he bulked up in the off season. He got, you know, huge. And, and the rest is history. You know what I mean? He's shooting threes with his eyes closed sometimes and he's making them um, (laughs) these little step back little two point um mid-range jumpers that he's like off balance you know his body's like and hard hard shots yes too it's not easy shots it's great like you i wish that you could see my face when he makes these shots i'm like how like this (laughs) is just crazy like he really practices these off balance crazy shots because he's making them yes so it's like i I, i'm here to say that we need to stop doubting tyler hero because he is a menace he's great he's you know if probably the fourth or third best player on our team i that's a little risky to say that but it may be third to be honest you know jimmy bam like, yeah, he was good enough to be nominated for Player of the Week. Let's also yeah. talk about that. Should have won that. Should have won. <laughs> I mean, he yeah. should have won. But just getting nominated alone, it's that's a huge deal, I feel, for him. No, it's huge. It means that the media is actually paying attention. Yes. And that is, you, you know, great. We deserve to be talked about because what we're doing is, 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 is special. You know what I mean? We're beating yeah. these teams with missing literally all of our best players yeah and it's just it, it's just great but tyler hero is just yeah, i will never ever doubt him again <laughs> now he, he you know he had his first official off season where he actually got all the days off that he needed to train and to bulk up and to do what he needs to do and he said he was going to prove people wrong this season and he definitely has you know what i mean so yeah there's not much else we can say there he's just great exactly but i do want to talk a little just just a little just a little sprinkle about the 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 little nurkic fight i like that from tyler i really do yeah i had like such mixed feelings at first so i was kind of like wow it's kind of like deja vu a little bit (laughs) just a little bit (laughs) yeah hopefully no one gets hit in the neck yeah (laughs) let's refrain from that (laughs) but yeah I just like but that yeah. he act, like sticked up for himself, even though yes, it was bad. It wasn't like a good reaction to have professionally, but I'm just glad that he's not like you know not acting like a little baby about it. You know, he's kind of like no, like I I did it. Like, he knew what he was doing. You know, so it's like yeah, yeah. That's why I like that from him. You know what I mean? He's not really a, a type of guy to get involved in stuff. And I could tell earlier in that game, he was he, he was already you know heated uh, during one of the timeouts before they went on break on the TV. Uh, Tyler went to half court and nobody really noticed this. Tyler went to half court and Spoke pulled him back and he was like, just stop. 
like don't even say anything so he already had something going there that we didn't know about that we yeah. didn't even see so once Nurkic did that screen, he was like, he had enough. Because Nurkic, you know, obviously Tyler pushed him from the back. Uh, so I'm not going to defend that. That was, you know, kind of a dumb thing to do. Yes. But Nurkic sets a screen and doesn't roll. He doesn't set, he doesn't roll off the screen. He just watches, he just looks down at Tyler Hero. Like, come on. Yeah. Man. You know what I mean? Like, that's a little bit on the disrespectful side. You shouldn't be doing that either. But also, Tyler Hero shouldn't hit a man when he's turned around and his back is yes. facing him. Exactly. Because that would be hypocritical for us to be like, support that when, you know, Jokic did the same exact thing. Yes. So <laughs> it's kind of a crossroad for me to defend him. But I do like that, like ferocity, that intensity. You know, I, I, I do like that. Yeah. And then, you know, Kayla Martin, once we got into that fight, he was not having it. He was like, come here, boy. Come here. Because <laughs> he was not having it. I know, because, like, I think um, he versus the world on Instagram posted that, like, slow-mo video. That was, like, a really cool slow-mo of Caleb. Yeah, I was, like, that was, a, was a, a super cool video. If you guys have yeah. a chance, go and check that out. That's a that's a great video. But that's when I saw it. That's actually when I saw that he did that. Because in the game, it was just so crazy and so hectic. I was like, what the heck is going on? And then when I seen the video of him on the he versus the world Instagram, I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah, he, he he's a lifer. He's a heat lifer. <laughs> yeah. Definitely loved him a little more after that because he was not having it and you should have seen the bench too the bench got up so quick no it super was like quick. they sprung up yeah they sprung <laughs> up they were ready yeah but yeah enough about that, that that fighting situation i feel that's just in the past tyler yeah. Hero got fined 25k you know or yeah. 30k something that's uh a lot Basically, of money to us. Yeah, like $25 <laughs> for him, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. 25 so, cents for yeah. him. Uh, yeah. 25 million for us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, he, you know, he got his his punishment, even though I'm, I'm actually surprised he didn't get suspended. But, yeah, um, but we move. <laughs> look, knowing the NBA, they would have suspended him and, like, fined him $5 million. So... <laughs> But anyways, though, enough about Tyler Hero. I do want to go into a little bit of depth about the All-Star Game and our, the early nominees that came out or the early voting stuff that came out. Uh, Jimmy was, I think, number five. That's crazy. Uh, Bam was, like, number seven. And then um, Tyler was also there in the guards. I don't know what number necessarily, but that's crazy. I, I, f- first, I don't know why Kyle's not there. I know. What the hell? <laughs> that's a little bit odd i feel like we haven't been voting for him enough i always see like jimmy tyler bam but i don't see enough kyle and we should definitely push that narrative he's he's been playing great and i feel like he deserves an all-star spot and when's the last time he wasn't in the all-star game because i feel like he always is yeah that's such a good question I so that's that's a little odd uh we should look into that but i know when he obviously played in toronto he was the only good player there so everyone in this freaking in Canada was in like Canada. Voting, so that's why he got in because everyone in Canada was voting for him. Yeah, but so I mean, it, for it the, makes sense. Like for the for like what's it the what the standings for right now? We should give shout out Heat Twitter for all those retweets. Like my timeline is like full of like people tweeting and like hashtagging and retweeting. I'm like I love to see it. I love yeah. all this traction. So we keep Same. that up. I just retweet, retweet, retweet every time I see it's a Heat player. I'm retweeting. <laughs> so that's. You know, I'm going to keep doing that. We have to. We have to get our guys in there. And especially having three of our guys in there, that's huge. I don't even remember the last time. Uh, the last time we did that was probably Bosch, Wade, and, and, and LeBron. Yeah. Which, you know, that was many, many moons ago. So it will be good to get three. And if not, we could get four. Oh, my goodness. That would be awesome. I will yeah. talk so much smack on the internet. <laughs> like, I know no other team is going to have four guys in the All-Star game. Let's be honest. Yeah. So. Oh, be fun actually, maybe the Lakers. But anyways. Oh, speaking I, of Lakers, do you want to... Yes, you wanna, I was about to go that? into the... the <laughs> enough about the heat. And let's just go around the league a little bit. Yeah. Um, LeBron James is the best player on earth. He's the best player of all time. I will die yeah, on this like, hill. I'll, I'll set up your, your soapbox. <laughs> yeah, I, I will die on this hill. A thousand percent. He is playing actually insane, like, career numbers. And he's, he's 37. He's I know. 37 years old. This man is not human. He is yeah. not human. It's it, it's insane. I think the most it, he averaged. I think he's averaging thirty seven right now. But he averaged or thirty eight, something like that. He averaged um, a little bit more when he was with the Cavs. So it, yes, it's not his best season, but it's one of his best seasons. And he's 
37. Yeah, like the age is the thing that like really blows my mind personally. And like also, it's also strange that people are even like arguing this, you know? It's kind of like, guys, like there's some things that are just inevitable and that are just ultimate. And LeBron is that. There's no there's no room for denial. Yeah. <laughs> so just, just guys, just stop. <laughs> yeah, like this is not a topic that should be discussed. This should just be stated and then everyone it's just a moves on. Yeah, yeah. so it's like... I, <laughs> Th- that's how I felt and I, and I get you know he's been to finals a bunch of times and he's lost but he's gotten there and that's to me he's earned like, it a thousand percent exactly that still is is a journey it's a feat to get there to the finals in, yes. in the first place you know what I mean so everyone just needs to stop the hate they just hate LeBron because he is the best so yeah that's that's really the only reason but enough about LeBron you know he did leave us so there's still a little bit of heartbreak there but the Bulls, the Bulls uh, just finished a nine-game win streak. They lost their streak to the Mavs. I don't know how they lost to the Mavs. <laughs> but the Bulls are, dude, DeRozan is insane. He had He's the first player in history to hit two game winners in the back-to-back nights. Back-to-back, yeah. That's that- like... And and they always like there were like um whenever I saw like the highlights and I saw that they weren't even easy shots either. They were the most weirdest, awkwardest shots. I know, I know. <laughs> they were like off balance, two guys on him, like yes. about to block the ball and he makes it. Yeah. I'm like, dude, like, this guy's what? crazy. Yeah. Literally. Okay, but Jimmy Butler's still better. I I I don't I I'm biased. But, but at the same time, I'm not. Jimmy Butler is still the better player. Than I've seen so many people going off with, oh, the, uh, Jimmy is better than DeRozan. DeRozan's better than Jimmy. Jimmy is better than DeRozan. I'm not going to have this conversation with anybody because that's the right answer. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. So enough about the Bulls, though. I do want to go a little bit in depth about the top five in the East. Uh, we have the Bulls at one, the Nets at two, he at three, which is great. We just actually passed the Bucks. We were four. The Bucks are now four. And then we have Philly at five. I, I want to get your opinion <laughs> on what you think about this top five. I mean, it's it's a pretty good top five, you know, well-known teams and teams that we expected to be uh, in the top five. Yeah, like I feel it's almost kind of shocking a little bit of how like we've been able to keep this top five in the East the way it is it's like with because I feel like all these teams in the top five have fallen to any sort of like injury or sickness related issue this whole season all the time so it's like to keep up that like momentum and like win streaks and stuff like that I feel like it's, it's really difficult for all of these teams and they still were able to like keep these positionings and like still be threatening and huge you know so um but I know for sure like obviously the heat's mangle right now we should just get the nets out of the way <laughs> so yeah and speaking of the nets they don't have james harden uh tonight i think that that's what we were told yeah but um that's good you know the we need them to lose we want them to lose and we want the bulls to lose too obviously we want to be first of course i mean who doesn't want to be first yeah but um i think we have a good chance you know if if we end uh, if we end four or five, I feel like I would be happy with that. Maybe three, but it, I, and I don't want to jinx it, knock on wood. I don't think we're going to be in the plan. I, I really think once our players come back, we're going to go nuts. Yeah, like once everyone's win. back, I think we'll be 100% five. Uh, 100% fine and no plan necessary type of. Yeah, I agree. Fine, and, you know. But you know us, we panic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He Nation goes into a frenzy constantly. Which it, it, it's fine. I mean, I love it. I mean, I go into a frenzy usually too. I am one of those people that freaks out. But then I come back to earth and I realize, you know, we're fine. It's just one loss. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, well, I, you, you know, we're good. Uh, I don't think we're going to fall enough to get to be a playing team. I don't think that we'll lose that many games. We're 25 and 15 right now. That's 10 games above 500, which that that helps me sleep at night. It really does. Yeah, it, it it makes me so happy knowing that we are ten games above five hundred. Our record is great. I hope that we just keep winning and keep winning and keep winning. Imagine we end the season with just fifteen losses. That'd be <laughs> we just amazing. win every single game for the rest of the season. <laughs> that would be literally Wishful heaven. thinking. <laughs> just do it, guys. Just do it. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, guys, just do it. Just win uh, forty in a row, <laughs> please, for us. Break records. But anyway, so um, I do have hope that we're gonna be fine. So, yeah, same. I, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, I feel like that's pretty much everything. Is there anything you would like to add? Any opinions or any um, new stands would like to 
throw into the the pod? <laughs> I think that I feel like last notes I would say that um Kyle Lowry is like close to also me becoming like a Kyle Lowry stan <laughs> <laughs> besides um Max, but uh overall loving like the game so far. The two wins are nice to go off up into these new games against Atlanta and Toronto. I think we'll be will be great and I'll let you know what the Sixers game is like since I'm going to be there. Yes. Yes, so. I'm so excited for you. I'm for sure going to try to live tweet so yes, follow me. Yes. Yes, and pics. <laughs> just uh, pics of not the Philly players. Just the Heat. <laughs> no, now I'm just going to send you just purely like just pictures of Embiid oh, or something. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I'll block instant block. <laughs> but I I do want to just touch on on Kyle Kyle Lowry real quick. I didn't give him his due. Um he's been playing great. I love him. I hope we never trade him. I've seen some trade talks of, uh, and I know this is going to sound so, so nuts, and this is a very, very hot take, but I do not want Damian Lillard here, to be honest. I I Ooh, really, really, really that's like a Kyle. Hot take. It's a really, it's a spicy one. It really is. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I, as uh, you know, obviously I used to play basketball. I have a, a love for a true point guard and that is what Kyle is you know he's a pass first point guard which is what yeah. a point guard should be and Damian Lillard he really looks to score the ball a lot so I love Kyle Lowry and um that I know that was a really really hot take but I'm gonna <laughs> stand spicy by way it way to end the pod for sure I'm gonna stand by it 100% <laughs> but yeah that's that's basically it um that's all I have to say I came and talked my my ish yeah same so but... all, all right. right well thank you guys so much for listening i hope you guys um enjoyed the episode uh if you guys haven't heard our other pods our other yeah. episodes go and, and and check them out right now they're on the five reasons uh youtube page and also on practically anything you can listen to a podcast on exactly <laughs> so and let us let us know what you think about our thoughts on social media because we would yes. love to know Yes. Give us critiques, but be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have feelings. <laughs> no, just be brutal. <laughs> yeah, just, be, just be god awfully brutal. <laughs> so we can uh, uh, change. <laughs> but definitely, yeah. I feel some people coming for me for that hot take at the end. But that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. Yeah, it's nice and spicy. So, yeah, nice and spicy. All right, well, that's the end of the episode. Thank you guys for listening. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.